Uh, John Walton, 5824, he says, um, is it correct to say that a counterpoise is not needed for this antenna? And when he says this antenna, he's talking about an NFED half wave antenna, like the, um, you know, like, yep. like, like the car antenna I've, I've got here. Yep. And uh, that's a really good, that's a really good question uh, because yep. there's, and, and I know we've got a couple in the chat. Um, yeah. Uh, Simon asks a question about NFED half wave counterpoise length and choke placements always seems to cause big arguments on the forums. So what's our views on that? And um, same with TextPat. <laughs> uh, it's got an NFED half wave with 100 feet of coax. Where's the best place to put the common mode choke? At the antenna feed or at the radio? So um, all of these questions are related. <laughs> and, <laughs> and uh, Dave, are we gonna are we gonna give them the definitive answer tonight? Or <laughs> well, or <laughs> it, there's there's controversy. So no matter what we say, there will be someone that will will not agree. Yeah. Will not will not agree. This is this yeah. is this is one yeah. of these um, ham radio holy wars. Is so, yeah. um, and, and the truth be told, um, it will work either way. You know, mm -hmm. you can put a counterpoise on. Most of these uh, transformers are designed with a uh, connection that you can put a counterpoise on it if you want to. Yep. Yep. This you is can, the radiator. You, this is yeah. The, then the counterpoise. So yeah, and you could put a stake in the ground and run a wire to it if you want to. Um, you don't have to, I don't, and, but it does need, it needs something to, uh, replicate the counterpoise. And mm. what most of, what most of us do is, is because it's being fed at the low current point on the antenna, it doesn't need much of a counterpoise. And in most cases, we just use the coax shield. And so the shield of your feed line becomes the counterpoise. And the, the downside that you have to be cautious of is that now you have RF flowing on the outside of your coax. Yep. And you don't want that to come all the way back to the transceiver. So what you wind up doing is put an, an isolation transformer somewhere in that feed line. And, and the theory is that it needs to be, a, I don't know what, 15 or 20% of a wavelength of your, the lowest frequency that you're going to use. And I don't know how critical that is, but but what I do recommend is that you use the same coax w every time you deploy this antenna, because if you cut your, your NFED wire to be resonant at the exact frequencies that you want, and then the next time you deploy it, you use a way longer or a way shorter mm -hmm cable between the feed point of the antenna and the isolation transformer all those frequencies will be slightly different so no that's if so, you're using your that's if you're using your coax as your counterpoise correct mm -hmm. yeah yeah correct so so i i just say stay consistent and i, I i'm going to estimate that my coax between the between the 491 transformer and my tra my choke is probably 15-ish feet long, maybe maybe 14, 18, somewhere mm -hmm. in there. And, and it works really good and it's very consistent. And um, what what the other factor that affects tuning on those end feds a little bit is the height. Mm -hmm. So if you deploy it way up high in the oaks, it's a little different than if it's eight feet off the ground. But, and then it's down low, yeah. yeah. But his question about the counterpoise, is you can do it any way that you want. You can put a counterpoise wire on, and that's great. But for me, I do it as simple as I can. So I go with just the coax and a choke. A choke, yeah, and then the CS. So if you want to use a counterpoise with your NFED half wave, you'll probably want to put that common mode choke near the feed point, and that'll help. Um, that'll help the antenna, you know, best utilize. The counterpoise with the that's that's connected to the uh, the transformer there. If you're gonna avoid the counterpoise and just use your coax as a, as a feed as as a counterpoise, and now you know a lot of people say, well, I don't need I don't need a counterpoise with my NFED half wave. Well, yeah, you probably don't. But what's ha what what you don't realize is that they are unknowingly using you know their their coax is un you know, unknowingly to them. Is has become that counterpoise. So, 
and like Dave said, um, if to to keep RF out of the shack or to minimize it, minimize those common mode currents uh, past the point you don't want them anymore. You know, for as as part of the counterpoise, you'll want to yeah um, position that choke probably oh um, say like a fifth of a wavelength of your lowest of your lowest band. So mm -hmm. if you're if you're if you're Infant F wave is 10 through 40 meters. Um, a fifth of a wavelength is probably about, I don't know, what, what, is, what eight, is that about? Eight meters. Eight, eight meters. meters. Yeah. So there you go. Eight meters, 30. Yeah. So eight times three is tw about 24 feet. So, yeah. <laughs> or how, yeah. how many is that in bananas? So, <laughs> so, so uh, you know, you know, the other thing, the other, the other thing I wonder is, uh, when I deploy mine, I always have the transformer at the low point. Okay, so it's usually like six or seven, maybe eight feet off the ground, mm -hmm. and so my so my feed line cable is coming down about eight feet or so, and then it runs along the ground. Okay, would it be different if I deployed it where the transformer was say thirty feet up in the air, and so mm -hmm. my my feed line down to the choke transformer was all in free space rather than laying on the ground. Would that, would that make any difference? I don't know. Uh, I've, I've a lot of times, you know, I've got that chameleon in fit half wave and I've always, they've always recommended that you deploy the feed point up high. So then the coax droops down. Yeah. And I've, I, in that in that case, I use the coax as the counterpoise. And I think, you know, it's kind of like, now you're sort of like an inverted L kind of, kind of thing going on there almost. And it works well. It, it actually yeah. does. I think in, yeah. in that, in that situation, I've had, I've had very good results uh, with it like that, but. Yeah. I'm sure it would work. What I wonder is if the tuning is different so that you have, so that the length of your wire itself would need to be adjusted a little bit if the counterpoise was radically different from one deployment mm -hmm. to the next like that i don't know sometimes yes that that antenna is, is sometimes is a little off for me and i i have to throw the tune around but usually it's it's below two to one uh, yeah. for you know for, mo for in most cases yeah and i'm a guy that likes to pack light so i prefer not to ever have to bring a tuner so mm -hmm. i I steer clear of those, like the uh, like your random wire. I'm not a fan of that. So, but my G90 yeah. has a tuner built in. You know, if I'm using the G90, then I'm good. But, and the G90 that'll that'll tune that'll tune a random wire just fine. Mm -hmm. so. But, uh, so I hope that answers everybody's questions about <laughs> infit half waves and where to put the you know if the counterpoise is necessary and where to put the choke. Um, choke it. You know, if you're using the counterpoise, choke it high. If you're not using the counterpoise, choke it low, so that your coax becomes part of, becomes part of that um, that that antenna network. So, uh. KB9 VBR antennas are simple, effective, and affordable VHF and UHF antennas for amateur radio, MERS, public safety, and GMRS. Made in the USA with quality parts. Get yours online at jpole-antenna.com.